Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bearer. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So today what we're going to be doing is playing around with Maya's particle systems in Viewport 2.0. I'm going to be showing you a couple tips and tricks with that as well as working with the node editor. So if you're an expert Maya user who uses Dynamics inside of Maya all day every day, this probably will be a bit of a review, but you still may pick up something. Um, I hope you guys do. And um, if you're new to Maya or an intermediate user who hasn't done a lot with the dynamic system, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some stuff in here that, that, that you'll find useful. So this is a file that I put together um, when we launched Maya 2015 to, uh, to show a bunch of the new stuff. And I'm going to use the same scene to sort of dig into one of those effects a bit uh, more in depth. So one of the things that I did for those new feature videos was I used the Maya Fluids node to give me this sort of nice volumetric fluid effect in my viewport. And the thing that's really cool about using the Fluids node to do something like this inside of Maya is A, it, you know, it looks really, it looks pretty cool in the viewport, but it will also software render. Essentially what I did is I took a Maya Fluids container and put it around my whole environment and then I'm texture mapping density. So there's not a fluid sim happening here. There's no fluid movement. We're just using the dynamic or the, um, the volumetric rendering um, aspect of it, both in the viewport and in the software render. And the thing that's kind of nice about it is because it's something that you can texture, you can put noise in there, you can animate the time of the noise, you can layer it, you know, and have layered fog that's maybe low and thick fog on the ground and then it thins out and then it gets thick again up in the atmosphere. So you can do some pretty fun things because it's a fully texturable volumetric um, cube essentially of, of fluids that we're, that we're viewing our scene through. Again, both in real time and in, in the software renderer. So that's pretty cool. So this was the, um, this was a ship and what I wanted to do is have some particles emitting out of it. And one of the things that was newly supported in 2015, not only was the display of particles in viewport 2.0, but the ability to do some stuff that we couldn't do even in the legacy viewport. Um, basically all the texturing information that you would set up on particles or sprite based particles wouldn't show up in hardware. You'd have to do a software render to get to them. So that was something that was newly added and, and what I wanted to show in that demo with sprite particles. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of building that up and, and show you, you know, some, some bugs or, or some regressions or pitfalls that, that, that are there as well as some workarounds for those. Um, I think that's a bug. I don't know. It doesn't seem to work right. So I'll, I'll show you where that is in, in, in sort of the way that I prefer to get around it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and create a particle system in our environment. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a end particle. So I'm going to use a ball. That's fine. We'll just grab that particle tool and click down in my viewport, hit my return key. I've now created a new particle called end particle 2. And what we want to do is we want to tie that particle into some emitters that are already parented into the hierarchy of my ship. So this is a pretty standard workflow inside of Maya. We'll just bring up our dynamic relationships window. And yeah, we'll add the turbulence onto that guy. We'll also jump over to the emitters for emitter one and emitter two. So that guy's in there now. We can close that down. We don't need to see that. So if we just rewind this and play it back, what we have here is obviously a particle system you know, getting blasted out of the back of the ship. So if we bring up the attributes for this and we start to change some of these to make it look a little bit more like thruster jets, um, I'm going to use a preset to do that. So presets inside of Maya, I use all the time. I recommend making some presets of stuff. It, it just helps you jump around quicker between different snapshots of attributes that are um, currently loaded up in your attribute editor. One of the things that I always do for all the texturing nodes inside of Maya as well as the dynamic nodes, so things like a fluid node or a particle shape node, is I go through and record my own default preset. Basically, I take a snapshot of the node, write what it looks like when you create it. This gives me the ability to roll back into that you know, default state if I want to. I, we should probably ship Maya out with the presets already set up as a default preset in most of them, but for some reason we don't, and it's one of those little workflow things that I always do. So. I've got this thruster one, we'll just hit replace on that. So it, it does um, a few things. It switches the render type to spheres. It depth sorts them. Um, it's obviously changed the ramp widget here as well as the, the radius and the radius scale. So the way this, these ramp widgets work is essentially they're, they're driving per particle attributes that are, that are kind of loaded up and tied into those internal ramp widgets, which is all well and good for things like spheres and clouds and all those sort of legacy default um, those kind of classic software rendered particles, but for sprite based particles that use their own attributes for scale, like scale X and scale Y, this radius isn't going to tie into it and it's not going to change the scale of my sprites based on their age. And that's really what we want to have happen. So we're going to have to make some, some modifications to those particles to, to get that to happen. And it's, again, 
really easy to do inside of Maya if you know where to look. Um, and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. And one of them is a little broken, and one of them um, is the way I prefer to do it. So let's go ahead and switch our particle type over to sprites. And when we do that, obviously our sprites now are little cards waiting for texture information to be added onto them, as well as some some scale changes happening to them based on age that we had before. So to to get that scale change to happen, we're going to have to add in some dynamic attributes that are specific to sprites. So we'll just click on general, just make sure you click on the particle tab inside of this guy. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using sprite scale PP for X and sprite scale Y PP. So um, the PP at the end means per particle. Each particle can have a unique attribute. So we'll go ahead and we'll add those guys on there. And now what we need to do is essentially have these um, get changed somehow. So by default, a Maya user would think, well, if I right-click inside of there, it's going to bring up something, and I'm going to get to do it. Uh, so you could have these being driven by expressions or by ramps. And I've talked about ramps several times in my presentations. Ramps are a great utility for uh, modifying attributes, right? You can shove some information into a ramp, use that ramp to massage that data, and then spit it back out. And that's really what this is doing. If we say create ramp, we're going to have the particle age, which is something that's just queryable, have that... Um, tied it into the V chord of a ramp and then have that ramp change its position. So this is the default way that people would probably think about, you know, adding in, adding in um, change in size here. So if we rewind this and play it back, you can see that those sprites are indeed changing in, in scale based on that ramp. So if we jump over to our node editor here, actually, let's just go to this guy and Get those fluids back on here. You can see that ramp is is tied into that into that in particle um, in particle system here. So if, the problem is if we change a value on this ramp, and it's just a range of zero to one, right? If we change a value on this ramp, it doesn't really update, right? Like if we go ahead and we slide this over here, you can see the update's a little broken until I give Maya a kick by moving that viewport. So that's not that's not really the most elegant way. And the other problem with this is if I want to change the overall scale of these guys. You know, I could multiple. I could put a, a higher value inside of here, right? Instead of being one, I could put a value of ten in here. But you know, you do something like that, and then your ramp gradient gets all kind of wacky. So that's not cool. So then, you know, the other workaround for that, a couple different ways of, of getting around that would be to go down to your multiply, which gain means multiply in Maya, right? Put that to a value of ten. So now we're taking the default range of this ramp, whatever it's putting out, and putting it to a range of, you know, multiplying it times 10. So that lets my ramp be this nice, you know, white to black gradient. Um, but I have to edit it in a couple different places. And you can see that it, you know, it doesn't really update all the time. If you click on the particle node, it'll update. But it's it's just not, it's not an easy way of doing it. Um, so that's why I don't like using um, a ramp widget here. The, the one thing that's kind of nice about using a ramp widget is you you get a graphical node that's outside of the particle shape node. So if you like to see things sort of laid out in a very sort of almost um, procedural way or graphical way, you know, having a bunch of ramp utilities in your chain, you may find easier than actually always going back and trying to use the internal um, attributes that you have to scroll through a list to get to. So it's it's sort of a personal choice thing. Um, I use a combination of both actually. So we'll go ahead and we'll change this guy. We'll just break that connection. So instead of using a ramp to change these, and if we play it back now, you'll see that it's going to be back to everybody being the same size here. What we're going to do is we're going to use that internal attribute. So on this guy, this particle node, um, there is that internal ramp attribute. So I want to make a connection from the particle shape back into the particle shape. So to do that, it's kind of funny. The easiest way to do it is to literally middle mouse button, loop back and drag and drop it on top of itself. It brings up this giant list. doesn't matter what you click on. Click on any of them because it's going to load up the connection editor. So you can see that we're going to take the output of in particle shape 2 and have it drive the in particle of in particle shape 2. So we're creating like a little loop here. But that's, that's totally cool. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the list and grab that internal ramp radius. Scroll down to the bottom of this list, and you can see that the radius PP is 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 being driven by it still. That's great if I want to jump back to the cloud or, you know, um, ball or sphere or whatever. I'm going to also have that internal radius PP drive my scale of my sprites. So now if we close this down, and we uh, just rewind this guy and play it back here, you can see that we've got this. Uh, let's change that random age to 
0.5, make those guys have a little less randomness in them. Um, you can see that now what we have is we've got a really nice way, place to adjust these. Obviously, it updates in real time, and I don't have to dig around and look for you know a couple different places to change the overall scale that, that my ramp multiplies on top of. It's just all right here for me to get to. So, you know, I don't know. I, I find this way to be a, a little bit a little bit nicer. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to start to change some of the texturing information on these guys. So if you just, while this particle system's highlighted, um, scroll down and say graph material on viewport, you know, we'll just graph that shader that's associated with this. So you can see that we've got this particle sampler info node. Actually, we can close that guy down. And that particle sampler info node is got out color, out incandescence, and out transparency piped into this shader. This particle sampler info node basically means whatever we're seeing in these ramp widgets for color, opacity, and incandescence, which I don't have expanded out, um, actually I do right here, is essentially getting passed on into um, the color of that shader that's associated with it. That's awesome, you know, but really what I want to do is I want to break that pattern up. I don't want this just to be a simple square. I want to break up that transparency with a fractal, right? So we're going we're gonna to kill this time-based component and I'm going to have it be based on whatever I texture map into the transparency of this slider. So we'll just bring up a create file node. We'll throw a 2D, a 2D fractal in, inside of that guy. So now each, each sprite has this 2D fractal in there, right? So we could, you know, maybe um, jump to the V repeat on this guy. We'll lower that down to 0.5 and 0.5 to kind of grow the scale of that fractal. So now we've got a you know sort of broken up pattern here. But what we don't have is we don't have any time component to this guy. So those particles just die and they just pop off really abruptly, which is is not not a good look, right? So what we want to do is we want to get that information back, that time-based component back into this fractal. So there's two ways of doing it. One way would be to create our own ramp. Um, and have that ramp being tied to an attribute that we query, an age attribute that we query, which I'll show you right now. So to create our own ramp, um, actually I'll show you I'll show you a different way first. Let's go ahead and just use that out transparency. So if you just double click on this fractal and you look at alpha or uh, color offset, if we start to increase that color offset, obviously they go transparent. So if we want that to be um, based on time, well we know that this out transparency from this particle sampler info node is based on time, right? Because it was before. So all we have to do is hit our two key on this guy, or I'm sorry, our our three key on this guy, and we'll just grab that out transparency and tie that into color offset, which is what we were just playing around with. So if we just grab out transparency and go to color offset, you can now see that if we jump back into this particle system, and play around with its opacity scale, which is a ramp modifier on top of the time attribute, out transparency is basically taking this guy and passing it on through that fractal to give us a time component based on that. So that's that's pretty cool. And again, that's using the workflow where you go back into the shader or into the particle node and you use a ramp. Now if you wanted to get to a, to a slightly different workflow where we were using something that was a standalone ramp node in between the chain, well, that's pretty simple to do also. So if you just type tab or hit your tab key and start typing ramp, we'll bring up our ramp texture. So, you know, by default, the ramp texture again is always set to uh, to be a V chord. So what we want to do is we want to tie into this guy um, an attribute, an age attribute. So if you hit three on this, this particle sampler info node, it expands the list from its current connection to the default connections, and you can see that we have age and age normalized. So really what we want to do is we want to have that guy, this ramp widget here, have its um, V chord driven by normalized age. So to get to that V chord, we can hit four, which gives us essentially um, a custom definable list of attributes. Now, this is something that I always do. I'm always using that V chord, right? So to get that V chord to show up, all you have to do is say edit custom attribute list. As soon as you do that, essentially it brings up the ability to go in here and toggle on and off what you want to have show up in there. And again, V chord I use all the time. So I'm going to add that to my custom attribute list. 
So now if we turn this off, you can see if I hit 1, it expands the node down. If I hit 3, it expands it to the default list. If I hit 4, it gives me my custom list. And this custom list will be for every ramp node that I make inside of Maya. It's actually saved in your preferences. So you only have to do that once. And once you've done that, I recommend putting vcord in that custom list because, again, you use it all the time. So if we just grab normalized age into that guy, we now have a ramp widget that basically lets me adjust that normalized age and we can shove this guy um, into the the color offset if we want to. So we can say, let's just go ahead and hit um, 3 on this guy. We'll grab the out color and we'll, we'll shove that right back into that same thing that we did before with color offset. So by doing that, we now have a ramp node that we could touch in the UI and use that to adjust the um, the transparency based on age. So it's sort of up to you which way you prefer. You know, some people prefer, prefer to do it all on, you know, using the internal ramp. And some people like to build up a little kind of procedural network that they have um, control over that they can just jump around inside the node editor to work with. So, you know, all pretty straightforward. So the next thing that we want to do is, obviously, we don't want these guys ending as little squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create another ramp. And we're going to use this guy to create a circle pattern. So if we just go to our ramp and switch this to a circular ramp, make it transparent on the outer edges here. If we just go ahead and um, you know make it a little harsher right there, jump into this blend. Obviously, if we shove that into there, now we're gonna have a nice little sphere. You know, for each one of those each one of those sprites, and obviously we want to have this guy um, be not black and white. We want to have that fractal introduced back into it, right? So this is again very straightforward to do. If you just hit three and bring up that, that list of default attributes, if we grab the out color of this guy, just like we did before, and go to color offset, just like that, you can see that that particle system is now going to get shoved into each one of those guys, and it has this nice little ramp widget that we can use to adjust the overall um, you know, softness of those guys. And that's pretty much it. So it's a really simple Example, um, obviously, let's go ahead and just increase that radius of these guys a little bit bigger there. But that is basically um, how I built that effect up. A couple little utility uh, node workflows using the node editor, and hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Thanks again for watching Maya Mondays. I really uh, appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you guys you know, find it useful. Cheers.